Hello team. Today in this report I'm quickly we'll be looking at the results section of your report. Today's quickly we'll look at why you should put more time into your results. We'll be looking at two exemplars of differing qualities and seeing what we can take away from these um, previous examples. And then finish off the episode with some superb resources to aid in your results section. So why should you really care about your results? Well, depending on your project, you may have spent hours, even days, carrying out your experiments. So if you, you're doing a disservice to yourself if you just bung it into the document and call it a day. I mean, really, this should be the, the real fruits of your labour really coming off here. The more you do in your results, the more you have to talk about in your discussion. So if you struggle with the discussion writing, perhaps focus on your results may help you. Additionally, the results section are often a big payoff to all that comes before it. So you have all the materials that come before, like maybe the introduction, the aims, the lit review, if it's there, the methodology. So you get to pull all these strands together in your results, and potentially you can even go further by doing some innovative data analysis and visualisation methods. So results can be quite a, an interesting section. So here's an example of the marker and rubric for results. From this rubric, we can see the criteria is clear presentation and beneficial formatting. Additionally, I've added some possible additional criteria, which might be in the rubric depending on the weighting. Most of the time, results aren't worth much, maybe less than 10%, but sometimes they're quite big, maybe greater than 20%. This may cause you, when there's a greater percentage and greater weighting, to include some of the section that would be of discussion. So that kind of analysis with consideration of the background uh, and context might also be required in your results. However, for the most part, we're going to focus here on if it's worth less than 10%. The results section can be quite diverse. So I've stuck to common examples across the greatest number of reports that I've came across. For these exemplars, I've used imaginary experiments to look at comparing vulnerability scanners. There isn't much in this poor examples feedback, but there's still more, uh, this is still very common um, than you believe. The first point I've got here, experiment two, it's just a, a poor phrasing. There isn't much going on here. I don't, uh, maybe I don't remember experiment two from the methodology. So make sure you remind the reader what was experiment two, what did you do, and what was the aim of experiment two. Another one here is the word choice in the greater depth and the word most. It's not great, the word most, So, but what is accurate? Were the false positives? Tell me about the data. More fundamentally, is the most vulnerabilities the real takeaway from this experiment? Are you what if see something else in this experiment? Maybe it was the, the accuracy you're looking for, not the most. So, uh, was that the right kind of takeaway? Does it really matter in this um, experiment? Overall, this, as you would imagine, wouldn't exceed a good mark. Here's a decent example. We're using the same imaginary experiment regarding vulnerability scanners. The first point here is excellent, so definitely take note of this. It's reminding the reader of what the experiment set out to do as part of the greater evaluation of select scanners' effectiveness. Experiment 2 sought to assess vulnerability identification capabilities. That is superb. You can't see, but I'm doing that like kind of the chef's kiss emoji. Um... Brilliant. This is what you should start every one with. However, it's kind of let down as throughout the rest of it, we're not really seeing any much of the, the data here. We see like uh, there's a significant false positive ratio, yet we never see what this ratio is. Is it 10%? Is it 50%? You can put these in like, kind of in, in, in brackets next to the, the section that you're talking about. So maybe after ratio, you put in brackets 10% or something like that. And then that's where you'd put in the raw numbers. Don't forget to put these raw numbers in because it might not be clear in your diagram that you've kind of said in figure seven that it is what you're talking about. Make sure you mention this. Overall, this would achieve a good, close to great mark. But with just a bit of small revision, this could be amazing. Just make sure that you, you reference those numbers in your results. Before we get into further resources, I've compiled a list of quick tips which should help improve your results section. Firstly, subsection appropriately. Base the results section on the methodology before it. 
so you've got a uh, experiment one and your methodology experiment two experiment three mirror this in your results so therefore you can quickly jump between the methodology and results for these sections make sure you tie it all together begin each of these subsections with an appropriate abstraction of the aim you don't have to read Gurgitate the aim, you don't have to copy it word for word. Just kind of say that, oh, we looked at, we're looking at the effectiveness of the scanner or the accuracy of the scanner here. Things like this can really help. Refresh your reader and make sure you frame the conversation in your results section appropriately. After you do all this, you may well adopt the free sentence structure. So if you've got your the aim of the section, so the, the tying it all together a bit, then you've got your figure, you then want to do your um, free sentence structure. So the first sentence in this free sentence structure, which you don't have to take literally, free sections or free sentences might be a little bit too short. So um, it can be more than free, but try aim to stick to the same goal of what they're trying to do here. One, present the pure results. So say in in Figure Seven, the results of this experiment too, something along the lines of that. The next step after that would be a direct interpretation. What is jumps out of you at the graph that you can see and you can just explain the graph in words. Next thing you want to see is a broad interpretation. This is where you're kind of bringing it back to your uh, your introduction or your aims, sorry, and you're kind of alluding to the research question. Um, so if the previous section you identified OSAP identified the most vulnerabilities while avoiding a significant false positive ratio, that's good for a direct interpretation. Our broad interpretation would take this further. It would then say OSAP identifies the greatest number of vulnerabilities accurately, therefore appears to be the most effective vulnerability scanner. You're just extrapolating what your story was overall. And that's all you're doing is just making sure that you're aligning it to your aims. And this is just kind of a wee paratiche of your discussion. We're going to get to there um, and we're going to expand upon that and what that means in your discussion. You're just giving them a wee bit of a, a wee feel for what's going to come up next. Now, here are some ace, uh, resources to go away and read. I'd highly recommend looking at both of those uh, articles. The top one has been very uh, instrumental in me kind of more recently fixing how I'm going to do my results from a PhD. And then communicating statistical results. So if you're thinking about kind of more complex um, diagrams you're going to be using, you may want to think about how you um, communicate that. And as always, look at Phrase Bank. Saves you so much time and it just helps tremendously when it comes to writing. So to summarise, this report writing quickie episode has focused on the results section of your report. We've spoken at length about how this section is a fruit of your labour, so treat it well. Through examples, we've identified some common mistakes and good practices which you can take away and learn from. And with ample additional resources, you can improve your results to the next level and secure a great mark. And with that, that's all from me. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and good luck.